Bay laurel leaves Indian bay leaf Cinnamomum tamala Indonesian bay leaf Syzygium polyanthum The bay leaf is an aromatic leaf commonly used in cooking. It can be used whole or in a dried or ground form. Bay leaves come from several plants, such as, the leaves contain about 1. 3% essential oils, consisting of 45% eucalyptol, 12% other terpenes, 8-12% terpenal acetate, 3-4% sesquiterpenes, 3% methyl eugenol, and other alpha, and beta pinines, felandrine, linalool, geraniol, terpineol, and also contain lauric acid. If eaten whole, bay leaves are pungent and have a sharp, bitter taste. As with many spices and flavorings, the fragrance of the bay leaf is more noticeable than its taste. When the leaf is dried, the aroma is herbal, slightly floral, and somewhat similar to oregano and thyme. Myrcene, a component of many essential oils used in perfumery, can be extracted from the bay leaf. They also contain eugenol. In Indian cuisine, bay laurel leaves are sometimes used in place of Indian bay leaf, although they have a different flavor. They are most often used in rice dishes like biryani and as an ingredient in garam masala. Bay leaves are called tespata and in Assamese. In the Philippines, dried bay laurel leaves are used in several Filipino dishes, such as menudo, beef pears, and adobo. Bay leaves were used for flavoring by the ancient Greeks. They are a fixture in the cooking of many European cuisines, as well as in the Americas. They are used in soups, stews, brines, meat, seafood, vegetable dishes, and sauces. The leaves also flavor many classic French and Italian dishes. The leaves are most often used whole and removed before serving. Thai and Laotian cuisine employs bay leaf in a few Arab-influenced dishes, notably matzaman curry. Bay leaves can also be crushed or ground before cooking. Crushed bay leaves impart more fragrance than whole leaves, but are more difficult to remove and thus they are often used in a muslin bag or tea infuser. Ground bay laurel may be substituted for whole leaves and does not need to be removed, but it is much stronger. Bay leaves are also used in the making of jerk chicken in the Caribbean islands. The bay leaves are soaked and placed on the cool side of the grill. Pimento sticks are placed on top of the leaves, and the chicken is placed on top and smoked. The leaves are also added whole to soups, stews, and other Caribbean dishes. Bay leaves can also be used scattered in a pantry to repel meal moths, flies, cockroaches, mice, and silverfish. Bay leaves have been used in entomology as the active ingredient in killing jars. The crushed, fresh, young leaves are put into the jar under a layer of paper. The vapors they release kill insects slowly but effectively and keep the specimens relaxed and easy to mount. The leaves discourage the growth of molds. They are not effective for killing large beetles and similar specimens, but insects that have been killed in a cyanide killing jar can be transferred to a laurel jar to await mounting. There is confusion in the literature about whether Laurus nobilis is a source of cyanide to any practical extent, but there is no evidence that cyanide is relevant to its value in killing jars. It certainly is rich in various essential oil components that could incapacitate insects in high concentrations. Such compounds include 1,8 cineol, alpha terpenal acetate, and methyl eugenol. It also is unclear to what extent the alleged effect of cyanide released by the crushed leaves has been misattributed to Laurus nobilis in confusion with the unrelated Prunus laurisericus, the so called cherry laurel, which certainly does contain dangerous concentrations of cyanogenic glycosides together with the enzymes to generate the hydrogen cyanide from the glycosides if the leaf is physically damaged. Some members of the laurel family, as well as the unrelated but visually similar mountain laurel and cherry laurel, have leaves that are poisonous to humans and livestock. While these plants are not sold anywhere for culinary use, their visual similarity to bay leaves has led to the oft-repeated belief that bay leaves should be removed from food after cooking because they are poisonous. This is not true, bay leaves may be eaten without toxic effect. However, they remain unpleasantly stiff even after thorough cooking and if swallowed whole or in large pieces they may pose a risk of harming the digestive tract or causing choking. Thus, most recipes that use bay leaves will recommend their removal after the cooking process has finished. The Canadian government requires that the bay leaves contain no more than 4.5% total ash material, with a maximum of 0.5% of which is insoluble in hydrochloric acid. To be considered dried, they have to contain 7% moisture or less. The oil content cannot be less than 1 milliliter per 100 grams of the spice. Thanks for watching.